Welcome to the final episode of Unsolved Scratch Mystery Season 1. In this episode, we'll be looking at the mystery of undefined scratch blocks. These blocks allow users to gain features that are not commonly allowed in Scratch. I will also be going over into the depths of the Scratch exploit that could possibly ruin the site. Without further ado, this is Scratch Unsolved Mysteries Episode 5, Season Finale. taken down This is now the oldest known FNAF fan game, not only on Scratch, but in FNAF history in general. Engaging on such a different level, uh, which really encourages this kind of mindset of seeing yourself and each other as makers of things and not just consumers. Well, it's pretty simple, but you're not going to like it. Leave Scratch. Yes, quitting Scratch is the most logical solution. Firstly, to make games on Scratch, you must use these things called blocks. They each have different functions and when connected they form a script that does something in your game. Now with that stated, there are only a limited amount of blocks, there's not an infinite amount of functions on Scratch. So somehow people have figured out how to create blocks that cannot be simply accessed. These blocks appear as undefined labels with a red box around them. No other box has a no other block has a red box around it. The color red is never even used with any other blocks on the site. These blocks are mostly useless, but some of them can gain access to things that Scratch cannot normally do, such as an automatic working physics engine that can be initiated with one block. So with that context, who are these people and how do they make these blocks? It's quite hard to find the creators of the original undefined blocks, but with the power of YouTube we can find some of the original tutorials showing how these are made. Firstly, I found a tutorial from 2016 uploaded by Mr. Kiltoin. This video simply shows a glitch in where you can use a custom block function to create an undefined block that Scratch cannot read. So, with this video, the mystery of how these blocks was created was basically satisfied. I didn't feel satisfied though, as I thought there was more to this mystery, and there definitely was. After researching further, I found out that there is massively more to these blocks than what first imagined. When researching 
For the creators of these blocks, they found a series of videos that shows blocks previously thought to be impossible to create, such as a block that allowed for a sprite to have a blue effect on it. This is not possible with all current versions of Scratch, including extensions like Toborg. As I looked through these videos, I found a link provided with each on each video with a link to a project that was called Hack Scratch Blocks. This features dozens of Hack Scratch Blocks that are all usable. Now, this project was shared in November of 2020, and since then these blocks have been spread far across the site. Although this should be impossible considering the project has a total of zero remixes on it. Scratch has a feature called remixing. This feature allows people to make their own copy of a game and mod it to their liking. When a project is remixed, it gives credit to the original creator. So this is how things get spread quickly around the site. Well, people including myself have figured out a workaround to remixing. Firstly, I've been very hesitant to say this publicly because it could create a problem on the site where people could effectively take a project as their own. It could create a situation where you would not know who the original creator of a game was. You could also report a game saying it was stolen when you didn't even create it. Okay, here it goes. So, Scratch basically allows you to download other people's projects and up upload them to your own. This allows you to 100% effectively steal someone's project and re-upload it with no credit given at all. This is a serious problem for games that have demos since people will download the demo and re-upload it calling it the full game, and when the actual full game comes out, they report it saying it was stolen, getting the original creator banned and taking all the fame from the creator. I obviously do not endorse this, this is a very, very, very scummy thing to do, but this is exactly how these blocks are spreading around the site. People will download them and re-upload them. In my opinion, Scratch should allow an option to disable this for your project or allow or, and or allow specific users or people to download the project. It's only been 7 months since this was first figured out and these hack blocks have evolved quickly. People are now making their own that completely vastly have different functions than all others, and it's just a matter of time before someone decides to use them for nefarious purposes. Eventually, these hack blocks could possibly hack someone else's computer to gain access to their files. Only time will tell. And that's a wrap. Thanks for watching Unsolved Scratch Mysteries. It's been a really fun series and I hope to bring it back someday. But for now, stay curious and keep investigating. This has been Biscuit Dog, your host, and I will see you next time. Bye!